Welcome to Take 5, where the last couple of months we've been taking five or more on the Ten Commandments, and today is commandment number ten. Uh, next time, I hope to finish it today. Next time we will do, a, I want to do a summary of the whole thing. So commandment ten, do you know what it is? Now, if you're a Roman Catholic background, or Roman Catholic, you it'll be commandment nine and ten, as we talked about in the first show. If you are a, a Protestant, background, except Lutheran, Lutheran go with the Catholics, um, Protestant background or a Jewish background, then it's just the 10th commandment. Do you know what it is? It is you shall not covet. Not a word we use a lot today. Um, it's tied to the Hebrew word to lust as well. So those two things go side by side, covet and lust. We don't use lust all that much today either. Maybe we should, but it's the idea of a desire or desiring what's not yours or desiring what's uh, out of bounds. Covet is a good word. And we're going we're gonna to look at several observations about coveting. Listen to the whole command now. The you shall not covet is sort of a summary of it. The whole command in Exodus 20 um, says this, 20 and 17 says this, You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male or female servants or his ox or or donkey, or anything that belongs to the Lord. Wow, that's pretty broad. Um, a couple of observations, if I may, in the few minutes we've got. First of all, wow. Do we regularly do that? I mean, all the time I'm coveting. You walk into an Apple store, and um, not an Apple store with apples to eat, but computers and phones. And I just walked into one re recently. I have a I think I have a 10, iPhone 10 or something like that. And I was looking at the mini iPhone 13. Whoa, this is this is only $1,200? I need this. No, I don't. My phone works fine. But man, do we do it all the time. Or you walk into a used car lot or a new car lot and you've got a fine car and you think, boy, that is really nice. Where, what are your areas where you covet? Boy, they're there, aren't they? And in our materialistic society, we do it without even knowing we're doing it. Uh, think about this command again. I'll read it to you. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. Drive into the nice neighborhoods in your community. Man, I wish I had that. Look at that Tudor. Boy, is that beautiful. A few years ago, to, to scale down a bit, my wife and I, Sue, and I moved into a um, town. They're called townhomes. It's big enough for two of us, especially. It's really nice, just built. It's very nice. But, you know, every now and then, there are other homes in our neighborhood that are much bigger. And I think, boy, that would be really good. Don't covet your neighbor's house. Don't covet your neighbor's wife or husband if you're female, right? And this is where lust comes in. So easy to do that. Don't covet your neighbor's male or female servant. Boy, that staff over there, boy, does he have a great staff. They work so hard. Don't do it. Don't covet your neighbor's ox or your his donkey. Look at that neighbor, man. He's got a great BMW 5 Series. I would really love to get in that one. And then it ends, or anything that belongs, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Boy, do we do that regularly. We don't even know it. My second thing that I observe from this is the Ten Commandments here on the 10th one are turning inward. They're turning inward. Covet, think about it, covet is an attitude. It is a disposition of the heart. Coveting is not an action. And so the Ten Commandments have changed now from civil law, what they were, to now personal moral law. The police can't write you a ticket for coveting. So it's now turning into a... It's what Jesus did with murder. He said, don't hate people or say nasty things about them. Uh, he took adultery and said, don't lust. Well, the Ten Commandments themselves, here on the tenth one, go right into the heart attitude. It it's, can lead to an action if we don't say no to that heart attitude, but it's, it is a matter of the heart. Um, Coveting really is. It comes from a, a discontented, a, a dissatisfied heart. God, I'm not satisfied with what you've given me. I'm not satisfied with what I have. It really is a heart thing for me. You too, I think. In our materialistic, consumeristic uh, society and culture, um, 
It's so easy to think I am the sum of, of my accumulation of stuff. I am that car I drive. I am that house. I am, I am those shoes in my closet. I am those degrees of, of education. No, you're not. It's very careful. Uh, this is the one command now. It ends with our hearts, which is why in Christ, in the new covenant, we are promised a new heart because our old heart is, has a tendency to be dissatisfied and to, to covet and to never be happy. Um, the Lord calls us instead, starting with our hearts, he calls us to a life of contentment, a life of generosity. That's how we can keep from coveting, just by giving it away, giving it away. He that is faithful in much and little will be faithful in much. I know people that have been faithful in much because they were faithful in little. They didn't covet. They just were grateful for what they had, and God gave them more. God calls us to a life of simplicity, too. Look that word up. I'm going to end this way. This is a really good command because it does deal with our hearts. Now, t Next time, we'll summarize the whole thing. Uh, John Stott, a famous British preacher of a brilliant man. If you've never read his book, Basic Christianity, and you're still wondering about the basics of our faith, read Basic Christianity by John Stott. Here's how he sums up. Um, I'm going to use it for us because it really applies. You shall not covet. Here's, here's Stott. Like the Israelites in the wilderness, we are pilgrims traveling to the promised land, and we will be wise to travel light. You shall not covet. I'll see you next time as we summarize the Ten Commandments. So long.